Thursday, the 21st of April, 2022. Folks say to be the very best, you gotta travel across the land. But I'm happy here at Pretty Good, just out walking with my friends. So you can fly from coast to coast for all the antics of ends. But my destiny is here in Tennessee. My Pokedex in hand You run your laps Chasing Mickey Tums In Providence And you arc your throws For Electabuzz And St. Louis But when you're lost In Boston Seeking Pokestops I'll still be spinning them up on Rocket Town. It's true. Well, you can race to catch them all and fall flat on your face. We'll hatch our toga peas here in Tennessee at our own predestined pace. Tanglers from Los Angeles. If you're there chasing Charizard, you're making your life way too hard. Clutching garlic, pounding pavement down Ventura Boulevard. We don't need Nitta Queen. From down New Orleans I hate to rain on solo you But parades need a willing crew All those squirtles on St. Charles Saw you wandering and withdrew well, You can race to catch them all Fall flat on your face We'll hatch our toga peas Here in Tennessee At our own predestined pace We don't need Lapras From Minneapolis Pull-uppers From Mississippers There's enough Weedos on Monteagle We could evolve a swarm Of beedrills There's enough snubble Down to shovel We could team A sled with grumble We don't need Oregon from out in Oregon Or any Pikachus From up in Massachusetts Sorry Professor Oklahoma We'll raid gyms in Tullahoma Sorry Pokecoin Palooka We'll hatch on hikes Chattanooga Well you can race to catch them all and fall flat on your face We'll hatch our toga peas here in Tennessee at our own predestined pace Well you can race to catch them all and fall flat on your face We'll hatch our toga peas here in Tennessee at our own predestined pace.
The summer is past, but your days keep growing longer. There's no wind in your sails, but the storm's blowing stronger. Walking hard, standing tall, keeping your head up through it all. Fighting fires, spinning plates, goodness how it gets so late. Joe Hills is filmed before a live streaming audience. That's us! Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And tonight, y'all are my live streaming audience. Welcome, everyone, joining us in all three chats. Over there in Discord, I see Bear. I see Wizard of Docs. I see Dottie Matrix. Down there in the YouTube, I see Michael, Emma Emerson, that bro, Rafazalo, Max, Hot Potato, Denise Hendricks, Nathan, oof, 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 Jared Seeley, Sheldon Steer, Martin C., Chase Nelson, Roselia Moon, Mason Allred, Goldie and Wittershin, Senvoid, Celestial Moss, Joram, Olive Oil, and Jill Jackson. Woo, are you for real? Guy on the internet and Kim as well. Welcome, Mahi Zero, Andre, Goiechia, Quiet Devious Mole. Game Boy 2000. Then up here in Twitch, howdy to Lucy the Art Android, Ariere, Swan Captain, Marcel M, the Ginny Bean, Lu uh, Pan, Abba da Baba Dum. Welcome to the Hufflepuff, Centuratron, where's Ziggy? Probably in Quantum Leap, if I had to answer. Uh, Archive Gremlin, DJ Frogtime, Kindleis, Alexis, Yo Yo. Welcome, Alex, Caristal, Wheezy, Butterfly, Cosmic Butterfly, Rotation, Red Rags, Ezra Manning, Rose Wolf, Second Fifth, Amy Yam, Fatima, Seagull, Borealis, Laura, Smarty Paints, Welcome, Mast Royal, Welcome, Moyark, Welcome, Berserk Loon, Devil Cakes, and Luneth. Welcome as well to 1985 PLC, Universal Kosher, Fell Chaser, Welcome to Neon Wyvern, Pumarin Cac, Toe Biter Clash, and finally, Winnie T. Ford in the house. Welcome, Winnie T. Ford, longtime supporter of the show. In fact, we're about to thank Winnie T. Ford in the first segment we have to record tonight. So, if you've never seen a Joe Hill stream before, what we do on the show here is we set up the scenes that I need to record for YouTube, and then I turn the camera off and I record them. So, if you've ever seen, like, Full House or Family Matters where they say, this is show was filmed before a live studio audience. Y'all are actually the live stream and audience. I'm going to do all the setup work and whatnot to get these shots ready. And I'm going to be talking to the chat while the camera's on. Also, if you've never seen a Joe Hill stream before, just so you know, the camera gets bigger. Tips are welcome via paypal.me slash joehills and YouTube Super Chat. When we hit tipping milestones, the camera expands. We are $20 away from our first milestone. I'll keep track of that cumulatively on this abacus here. But anyway, what I need to do... Episode 10 is very nearly done. I've been working a lot on the editing, and I need to record an outro for it that's going to show... Hey, here's where the pinball machine's gonna be. And, um, broadly speaking, like, you know, give me something to, uh, I need to read a poem and I need to thank Winnie T. Ford. Yep, I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube. That's why you don't sign a contract with Amazon, because then you can do whatever you want. I'm free, free streaming. Alrighty. So... Bear says, I feel like I'm in a creative drought trying to think about ways to mix things up. Bear, there's a few things I do when I'm feeling like that. I either do things that I wanted to do anyway but didn't have time for, like go hiking or play pinball or draw something. Like, when I'm trying to be creative in one way, sometimes I say, what are the other ways I want to be creative that I haven't made time for lately? And then I go be creative in that way. So, like, if you're having a hard time drawing, maybe try your hand at doing some, like, parody songwriting or go jogging or something. But anyway, yeah, the missing portal corner. 
<laughs> yeah, I needed that bit of obsidian for something. So that was a thing. Anyway. Yeah, the pinball machine is going to be rising out of the ocean. That's how tall the back box is going to be. We're going to get to that in our recording segment here. We actually need to kind of fly out this way. Bear says, I've been seeing friends I haven't seen in a long while. Oh, that's a great way to recharge. Good for you, Bear. Okay. The Humble Hufferpuff says, I'm a fantasy writer. I suggest you write a story. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if you don't normally write a story, writing a story is a good way to do something creative when you're not... Uh... Okay, so over there is our portal. There's the back box. This is where the front edge of the co of the pinball machine is going to be with the coin door. I kind of wanted to show the maps. Ooh. Yep, this is the mega base location. This is going to be a giant scale pinball machine. Okay. A guy on the internet suggests play a game. I, I'm assuming that's a suggestion for Bear trying to refine your creativity, not a suggestion for me, who is literally playing a game right now. Okay. So. We need to write a haiku to close out this episode. Now, usually I write the haiku after I've done the first pass on all the editing. So then I kind of can think about what we want to summarize or what we did that episode or how we felt about it, right? Because I feel like having something that really reflects the content of the episode makes sense. Milky Snowman, Tippin25, who says, Shall we show the viewers an expansion? That sounds like a great idea to me. Boom. 25 on the abacus. The first 20 there gets you a face camera expansion milestone, so please direct your attention down to slot 9, where I am busy putting the hot in the hot bar. And that way I can say, Howdy, y'all. Row Hills here, expanding as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. dee 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 Alrighty. So... If you've never seen a Joe Hill stream before, you may not realize that we are now $15 away from the next face camera expansion milestone. And that tips are welcome via paypal.me slash Joe Hills and YouTube Super Chat. So, anyway, so these markers here, this is the front of the machine with the coin door. The sides of the machine will go up here, then the back box will be up at the top there. Well, or at least that was the original plan. That's the plan for episode 10. Episode 11, we'll get into why we're not doing that. Um, so let's see what's the best way to get to the guppy geyser from here it might actually oh we need to use the bed to sleep Anna Broomfield says if you're really struggling creatively bear I recommend taking a break and asking why you need to be creative why are you trying to force it if it's not there right now I will say that getting extra sleep and getting more rest is always helpful um but that's besides the point, says, what's the biggest your face cam has been? You'll have to find out. Let's see where we get tonight. Okay. So let's go ahead, and now that we have laid our head down and dreamt, look at, look at how high the build height is now. This is really up there. So we're going to record the outro to episode 10 today and then the intro to episode 11. And spoiler alert, the intro to episode 11 is going to be that I'm going to stand over here and go, remember how we said the back box of our pinball machine was going to go right there? Well, Scar wants to build something right here. So now we're going to talk about that. Uh, because apparently I am going to have a neighbor after all. And so I do need to tweak the pinball machine plans, but... I don't want to introduce that at the end of episode 10. I want episode 10 to feel like it ends on a strong note, which honestly, I think it does. I think figuring out roughly what we're going to do is a strong note. But then episode 11 opens us with a, oh, we got to flip this whole pinball machine 180 degrees. Luckily, we've only placed six platforms so far, and <laughs> so that's not a real problem because this entire pinball machine is six platforms. Okay, let's make sure that we aren't missing any tips via PayPal. Okay, cool. So we're going to go this way.
So let's go over to the Guppy Geyser and look at it while we meditate on the haiku. Also, um, there was a comment on my Patreon that um, I'm sure that the top of the Hermitcraft Thursday meeting agenda will be, Joe, why did you create this abomination and how can we kill it? But actually, yes, um, the, the first item on the agenda of the Hermitcraft Thursday meeting this week was, um, why aren't we upgrading to 118.2 yet? Because this is the first demonstrable bug that we're actually taking advantage of on 118.1. Before now, the argument was, well, the viewers won't notice if we're on 118.1 or 118.2. But now that I've got this... Wait, where is Hypno? Hypno must be somewhere that there's a lot of tropical fish. Oh, here we go. Emma Emerson, thank you for tipping five. Who says, hey, Joe, thanks for accompanying me while I cook pasta. That puts us $10 away from the next face camera expansion milestone. Thank you. Um, so luckily, Cleo and I managed to convince the other hermits to keep the server on 118.1 so that this uh, beautiful fountain here can continue to operate. So let's try and write a haiku about the guppy geyser. Fountain of fish. A fountain of fish. Let, let, we got strong alliteration. A fountain of fish where the cave... Where the cave... Where the cave mouth meets the sky. Where... Where the sky... Kisses cave mouth. How are we on syllables there? Where the sky kisses cave mouth. Awesome. A fountain of fish where the sky kisses cave mouth. A natural wonder. That's too many syllables. Um, nature is healing. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah. Let's just go with nature is healing. I feel like that's sound. A fountain of fish. Where the sky kisses cave mouth. Nature is healing. Right? That sounds that sounds like a good Fish hate him. Click here to find out why. The auto mod thought that was spam Jill Jackson just because you were so well formatting. Mr. Fudarama says my kitty is enjoying the fish flopping. Why don't I use the fish to breed the axolotls? Don't worry, we'll have plenty of time for that. I'm so glad I added these slimes here, because they make the fish flop back up after they go off the edge sometimes. Like that one. That one right there that just went up. Okay, so. See, I just needed to look at it in order to write the haiku. This is, this is my happy creative place on the surf. Jill Jackson says, I figured the auto mod would catch it, but I knew you'd see it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we are actually... Wouldn't all the fish cause a bit of lag? Well, I mean, don't all natural wonders cause a bit of lag? Well, Centauritron, I have to use a haiku of my own devising, so... It's okay if you didn't come up with one, because I couldn't use it even if you did. Okay. Tio Pollo says, I missed the start. Any new visitors to Guppy Geyser? Um, well, we actually are going to have a segment with Asuma and I visiting the Guppy Geyser in our next episode. Or in my next episode. Probably in his episode, too. But uh, Beef visited it in his episode, and Impulse visited it on stream. So, hey, Iceman Sam. Iceman Sam writes, you and the Hermits make my days a lot better. Thanks so much. You're most welcome. I am so glad to hear that. We do what little we can. Okay. So, I feel like we need to close out episode 10 right here. And...
and um, okay so we're gonna turn the face camera off we're gonna hit start recording Hermitcraft season 9 episode 10 segment outro take one and action Uh, let's see, how do we want to do this? Maybe, I think we start with the map. Here at our treetop portal, I have created a series of maps to show the outline of the pinball machine mega base, or at least where it'll go. You know, six platforms does not a mega base make, but that's why I went ahead and augmented it with this incredible pair, which you can't see the other one yet. So right now it looks like a, a single tower. The Boom. We now have two towers of incredible scaffolding demonstrating how high the back box will be on this machine once it is finally built. Once again, this mega base is going to be the product of probably about a year of work. We are building a full-scale pinball machine. I say full-scale. We are building a actually above full-scale. I guess a full-scale pinball machine would be one-to-one, -one, so it would be about, you know, four and a half feet deep instead of 256 blocks. So yeah, I guess we are going to build a giant scale pinball machine. We are going to design it. We are going to kind of decorate the cabinet. We are going to fill it with components that will have some mechanical accuracy. They won't work in Minecraft, but you'll be able to look at them and understand how they work in the real world. At least that's the goal. But you know what? This is a good stopping point for today. We found a home for our mega base. We figured out how tall, how wide, and how deep it's going to be. And so we can just retire to our happy portal place. And let's go ahead and say thank you to Patreon sponsor Winnie T. Ford. You may have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free. Well, that was thanks to Winnie T. Ford. In lieu of that mid-roll ad, I will now read a haiku of my own devising. A fountain of fish where the sky kisses cave mouth. Nature is healing. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. Chat, don't leave. That is not the end of the stream. That is merely the end of the recording. So we're going to turn that face camera back on. I think that was a reasonable take. There you go, Winnie T. Ford in the chat. Glad you could catch that live. Uh, so I'm hoping to get that episode out Saturday morning. I feel like that is... Everybody's like, keep adventuring. Good night, Joe. It's like, no, I'm not leaving. I'm recording the outro. Yeah, do I do an outro and then an intro like a minute later? Yep, that's exactly it, Clash. We're about to record the intro to episode 11. So here we go. Start recording. Face camera off. Hermitcraft Season 9, Episode 11, Segment Alpha. Oh, we, we need to use the bed. I was going to say action, but take one. Let's go ahead and wait for the sun to set, and then we'll call action once we've actually done that. I saw some tips rolled in. Don't worry, we'll catch those after the recording segment. I have not yet determined the theme for the pinball machine. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Take one, action. And let's start gliding over this way. Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And today on the Hermitcraft server, we are at the site of our season long project, our mega base, a giant scale pinball machine. And you know what? It seems like as soon as I had picked this spot and claimed my plot, I've already got a new neighbor. That's right. I was talking to my friend Good Times with Scar. He actually has a build he wants to set up right in this little part of this, I don't know what you would call this, this peninsula, this little dark oak forest here. Now, Scar had already claimed a big area out that way to the west, but he has uh, something in mind that I can't quite talk about yet that he wants to place right here. And we started talking about the back box of my pinball machine being visible. Now, 
the back of a pinball machine is basically just plain black with a bunch of electrical warnings saying, don't reach in here and electrocute yourself because you will die. There is a lot of electricity in this machine to move all the parts. The flippers in a pinball machine propel a stainless steel ball bearing 95 miles an hour. So that's a good amount of electricity. Don't touch it while it's plugged in. So anyway, I was talking to Scar about this and he was just like, Joe, why don't you just rotate the machine 180 degrees? And I was like, no. That's a terrible idea. I've already decided exactly how I'm going to build this, and I'm stuck in my ways. And then as soon as we got off the call, I was like, oh, no, Scar was right. Like, if he's going to be building something here, people are going to want to see the well-decorated front of the machine and not the incredibly ugly back of the machine with all the electricity warnings. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move the concept 180 degrees rotationally which means we'll take those big old scaffolds, put them on these corners here on the south end, and uh, luckily we haven't placed any real blocks yet. After that, we actually need to start measuring where the uh, kind of key points of the cabinet are going to meet the ocean, how high they're going to go up in the air, the angle at which they're going to ascend. You know, right now we're just going to be building kind of a framework for where the actual blocks will go that comprise the machine. This is going to be, once again, a full season build. The farms that will generate the blocks for this server, or, no, I'm going to do a soft cut there. The farms that I need to make the blocks for the final version of this machine aren't going to be built for a month or two, maybe. So we just need to kind of be making slow and steady progress on this, as well as working on a few other things. Like, I need to revisit my axolotl shop and uh, maybe see if other people need help with their stuff. So why don't we go ahead and get on that now? Time skip! Okay. So there, that was a good, nice, and quick recording. So what did y'all think of that intro? I mean, I, I, probably, I probably could do it a little bit better. But I feel like it was kind of coming together. Okay, so we need to make sure we log out here. Borealis Laura says, Joe, sell billboard space on the back of the machine. I've considered that, but I don't want to ruin Scar's cool... I don't want to ruin the uh, backdrop of Scar's build, you know. So. Let's go ahead and see. Hey, we got some tips rolling in. Laura, thank you for the five, who says, a haiku for you. The real treasure is the egg-shaped hidden hermits found along the way. Hey, that's pretty good. I like it, Laura. Uh, please send more of those as you come up with them. Alrighty. Daisy Dreadful says, I love the behind-the-scenes streams. It makes laundry more entertaining. I'm so glad. Stacy in Green Bay, tips 10, who says, Thank you for bringing good energy to the Hermitcraft and to the community. Appreciate you. Well, thank you so much, Stacy in Green Bay. That puts us five past our next face camera expansion milestone. So here we go. It's time to expand. Alrighty. So I've actually, in terms of like the actual design of the machine, my goal is to use a real pinball machine for getting the cabinet dimensions, which is like the actual size and shape of the machine. But in terms of the play field and all of the details, I want to design and build that myself. So I actually went to the uh, art store the other day and picked up a bunch of color pencils in colors that uh, I was missing. That It's going to be hard to see this with the comma. But um, I picked up a bunch of color pencils in colors that I was missing and some new dot grid paper and stuff like that. So I think on my Wednesday morning streams with Cleo, I'm going to be doing some brainstorming for like what the artwork should look like on the side of the machine or the back box or the play field. I'm going to be figuring out where mechanically the different pieces should go, you know? Like, we can mark out, like, hey, here's the left corner, or here's the left side of the machine, here's the right side, here's the front, here's the coin door. But, like, figuring out all that stuff. Guy on the internet says, where's your bed going to be in the base? Oh, that's a good point. That's actually something I forgot to mention, is uh, we need to actually start building a storage area and some of the... Um, infrastructure we're gonna we're gonna be working with okay so let's go ahead and disconnect before the server kicks us for the nightly reboot 
I'm renting a pinball machine. Um, which I'm actually going to be showing on stream tomorrow. While we're waiting for the server to restart, let me go ahead and post a link to that. Uh, Twitter.com slash Joe Hills. So tomorrow I'm starting a three Friday series of playing pinball with musicians. I'm playing Total Nuclear Annihilation tomorrow with my sibling, Sean Hills. Next Friday, with a long-term friend of mine, we've known each other since we were teenagers, Pujol, who is really big in the local art scene and has done some music, uh, worked with Jack White on a project or two. Pretty cool guy. I'm really excited about having Pujol here uh, two weeks from uh, well, one week from Friday, which I guess is eight days from now. And then the third Friday of this three Friday series, we're going to have the actual creator of Total Nuclear Annihilation. Um, the pinball machine I'm going to be playing and actually measuring to kind of get the base dimensions for this. Um, Scott Denisi, who is also an incredibly talented musician. So if you check out that Twitter thread, uh, that has like links to some of the work from all three of these musicians, as well as dates, times. So yeah. Next three Fridays, no Hermitcraft stream, um, just like cool hangouts with musicians, playing pinball, and trying to get myself like in the right headspace. We're going to be talking about creativity and like just kind of how we try to do new things, even though like, because you know, you find something that works for you and you, you always want to keep doing stuff that works, but like if the way you got where you are is by doing new things, you can't stop doing new things either, right? So... This is going to be an incredible three Friday series. I hope you all check that out. Um, Benji Farmer says, are you a big Deep Space Nine fan? Yeah, I am. That's why we named our season nine Patreon server Deep Slate Nine. Uh, hey, welcome Sammy Higgins. Welcome Rex Verdi. Hello, Matthias. Glad y'all could join us. Okay, so we have successfully reconnected to the server here. I think the first thing we actually need to do is to reclaim that scaffolding. Um... Yeah. Uh, let's see. How do we want to do this? So part of me is like, I want to go build the inventory. <sighs> I'm really annoyed that I didn't build... That I didn't, that I didn't mention building the infrastructure. For... For the mega base. I think that we need to do that. I think we're going to try to do that intro again. Sometimes, so the, the intro, like the, the, the recorded segments aren't pre-written. I just kind of improvise and riff. But Fish Flem says, why not mention it after the time skip? I Sometimes just doing a second take is better. Here we go. So we're going to try this again. Turn off the face camera. Start recording. Hermitcraft Season 9, Segment Bravo, Take 1, Replacement for Segment Alpha, Take 1, Action! Just kind of let this load in for a second. Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and we've got six platforms placed in the open sea Near these guardians, oh gee, I want to get away from them. You might say, Joe, now that you know roughly where the corners of your mega base are, how are you going to get started? Well, folks, I thought I knew where the corners were. I wanted to believe. But as I was talking to my good friend, Good Times with Scar, he told me, Joe, I've got a secret upcoming project I might want to build on this little mushroom dark oak area here. Uh, would that be okay? And as we were talking about it, I was like, ooh, I don't know, Scar. You're going to be looking right at the back of my pinball machine, which is just kind of covered with a bunch of electrical warnings saying, don't open this up while it's turned on. You will electrocute yourself. And Scar was like, well, why don't you just rotate the whole thing 180 degrees? Sometimes Scar knows a little bit about building, and I think that moving these two columns here of scaffolds before we start building the whole machine is going to be worthwhile and then from scars build we'll be looking at the machine head on facing the coin door and the back box uh art um uh, which uh what do they call that art the art on the back glass is uh whatever i forget 
Oh, my brain. What is it called? The back glass art? It's called... There's a word for it. The translate. Let's, uh, let's go use the bed, and then we'll come back and say translate properly. Okay. Nope. Bad jump. So moving the back box from the north side to the south side now is trivial. If we waited until we had started placing blocks, that would be a real problem. So this episode, we're going to try and get some of the rough dimensions in for the machine, but it's going to be months before all the farms are up and running on the server that'll generate the materials we'll need to make something, honestly, this big. This is going to be a gigantic scale pinball machine. One thing I need to do this episode is take my bed and portal and stuff and kind of fix it up a little bit. One thing I realized is from the portal, you actually don't load all the chunks to the edge of the machine. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we will move the portal to this tree, which is just enough. No, that doesn't even get that corner loaded. Uh-oh. Hmm. I mean, the final portal will be inside the machine. But while it's under construction, we might have to figure something else out. We also need to build a new inventory kind of, uh, let's, let me, let me reframe this. So we're going to do a soft cut there. So in addition to moving the portal somewhere that it'll load the chunks better, we also need to start building some sort of storage depot for all the blocks we're going to need. You know, I'm kind of thinking maybe we dig that into this hill here just so we have what we need as we need it. But that's a lot of work to do. So I better get to it. Time skip. Okay. So that's about four minutes with the soft cuts. That'll come out to about two minutes. I feel like that's pretty reasonable. That, that I think that's going to be better. Um. Okay. I do have a bubble elevator in that tree, but it's more fun to fly. Why take when you could be given? Why watch as the world goes by? It's a hard enough life to be living. Why walk when you could fly? Or also, why bubble vader when you could fly? So, okay. Did I accidentally rotate that? Okay. So, this this whole build is actually going to take, like, this space. This is going to be huge. Okay. Whew. Okay, so... I feel like we're in a good place. We need to kind of figure out... What kind of structure we want to put the storage in. We could just dig it into a hill for now. Hmm... As I'm thinking about this, one of the easiest thing. Why is one map offset from the other two? Okay, this map is... So, this is the one-to-one -one scale. This is a two-to-one scale. Just showing the pinball machine and the stuff over there. And this is... No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. This is the three-to-one scale. So, we've got one-to-one -one scale over here. Two-to-one scale over here. And then that. Okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, let's see. Make my storage building inside a paper coin roll, like of quarters. Well, my the the starter base house that I have is actually based on a house from a pinball machine. Melora says you can make your storage facilities look like a large toolbox for repairs. I'm, yeah, I kind of want to, like, I'm trying to figure out if we're going to do,
Like, at a certain point, we just need to get the... We need to just rough in the shapes of things. And a big part of that is just having the materials. Like, we just need a safe place to put a bunch of chests right now. And I almost don't care what it looks like. But this is a visual medium, so I need to find a way to care. I'm also realizing, given how I placed my portals, or um, given how I have my tunnel in the nether, the single best place to put the portal would be perfectly aligned with it. North to south, just over on this shore. So if we put a portal right here, the walk to and from my house would be a lot shorter. Like, why should I have to go across the pinball machine every time I want to go back to spawn? Right? So let's think about that for a second. Okay. Let's go get some obsidian and just try getting a new portal in. Take my hand. We're gonna get obsidian. My classes are transparent. You really want transparent glasses uh, to see indoors. If I'm feeling adventurous, I could put my portal in the ocean monument. Oh, boy. I don't know if I love that. Am I thinking temporary or permanent? I was thinking temporary, but as we're talking through this, something more permanent might be wise. So, here's 11 obsidian. Where is my flint steel? Okay. So, let's look at the dimensions here. What I should have done was I should have figured out what the coordinates were over there. Okay, so this is 128 for each of these maps. So 128 is 2 to the 7th, I think. So divided by 8, which is 2 to the 3rd, would be 2 to the 4th, which is 60. Wait, hold on. No. I can't be right. So 128 divided by 8. Is 16. So I need to go, okay, 16 times 3 is 48. So if I go through the portal and then go about 60 blocks, that'll get me to the far, the further shore. <coughs> I'm reading from three chats here. Oh, wait, I forgot to get the coordinates here. So this is 320. So that means we need to go to 260, maybe? Negative 260. Hey, that's pretty handy. So let's say we come in right here. So the eventual, the final portal will end up in the machine. Okay, that's actually further this way than I was hoping. Hmm. So my math was a little bit off. Noel says, how difficult is it to keep up with three chats? It's easier than keeping up with one chat because it moves at one third the speed, right? So I worked as a historian and, well, I studied to be a historian, but I've worked also as a developer keeping track of like 
log files using tail-f, and it's easier to read three windows moving at one-third the speed than one window moving very quickly when you're skimming a lot of text. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's try here. that take me out at the same place? Okay, well, we're gonna fix that. Oh, yeah, that person has the profile picture of a child that is too young to be on YouTube. So we're just, and they're acting like a child that is too young to be on YouTube. So because of YouTube's policy that anyone under 13 be banned, we are going to ban them. Noel says, amazing, I never thought chat speed would be affected. Yeah, because one-third of the chat is in a different... Like, instead of having three times as many people in one place, we've got one-third of the people in three places. It's just easier. Was I ever able to work as a historian? Uh, not exactly. I mean, honestly, a lot of the development work I ended up doing as a programmer was taking systems that were built 10 years ago and modernizing them. And so a lot of the skills I learned as a historian, um, like going through archival correspondence and things like that, actually ended up coming in handy. Emily May says, I'm a little confused. What do you mean three chats? Well, I'm streaming in multiple places, and people are chatting on Twitch, YouTube, and Discord. Can I make it? Yay, perfect. I get by with little kelp from my friends. So, yeah, so, and that's the thing is, like, so, yeah, technically, I never worked in a job that was labeled historian. But all of the skills I learned as a history major in college were really helpful for working as a developer, modernizing old systems. Because I had to go through, because we'd find something and be like, oh, this is weird, but there's no good reason for it to be this weird. But usually if something is super weird in, a, in code, there actually is a good reason. We just don't know what it is until we take it away and then we have a bad day. And so a big part of my job was figuring out why weird choices were made 10 years ago. If that makes sense. And then making sure that whatever we did in the present didn't um, repeat the errors of the past, right? Well, you can kind of tell the difference between somebody was trying to work fast and somebody went out of their way to do extra work for a reason that's not clear. It's like, we know there's a better way to do this than this. And they went out of their way to hook in this other thing that seems unrelated. But that was a challenge for them to do that. If somebody spent three extra days working on this, there's probably a reason. Right? So, that's a big part of it. Um, the Patreon Discord comes in at $5 a month. The Patreon Vanilla SMP server is $10 a month. Patreon.com slash Joe Hills is where you can sign up for that. Just so you know, it's a manual invite, and I send those out in a batch by hand. Uh, so you're not going to get your invite during the stream. It'll be, like, probably the next business day. Okay. Oh, how do you score?
Okay. Now, Andre says, Joe, what's a good job for a history major? Well, in my case, it was LAMP developer. But, I mean, I originally became a history major because I wanted to have more time to study languages. And uh, my university didn't offer languages as a major. So I took a... Uh, I originally was going to major in East Asian history and then study um, Japanese and Chinese language uh, with Japanese as a minor and then Chinese is just a lot of courses. But, okay. I think we want to record tearing these down. Okay. No, my, my uh, alma mater didn't have linguistics as a major. Uh, LAMP developer, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Turbo Putt says, why Japanese and Chinese? Um, well, they both have um, a similar, um, like, the the formal characters uh, for both overlap heavily. Um, also, I was going into the military at the time. I was in Naval ROTC Marine Option. And I was like, well, we'll have this stuff in Iraq and Afghanistan white, uh, wrapped up by the time I graduate in 2008. So, you know, uh, with the third large, uh, one of the biggest Marine Corps bases in the world is in Okinawa, Japan. I was like, I should learn Japanese and Chinese, and that would be really valuable. Um, so, yeah. That made sense at the time. It turned out the Iraq and Afghanistan thing took longer than I expected. But I had some medical problems and was unable to serve anyway. So, anyway, Derek, thank you very much uh, for the five. Who says, thanks for the daily streams from your pal Derek Moulton and Charlie the Cat. Well, you're most welcome, Derek Moulton and Charlie the Cat. I have not done uh, ASL. Like, it, it seems really cool, but, like, I just haven't had time to learn it. Um... Howdy, Mashua. Middle Out says, that was an optimistic prediction on the Middle East situation. Yeah, it was. No, I didn't actually get to serve. I had uh, medical problems my sophomore year of college, and it looked like I was never going to be able to eat again without special medication. And the military doesn't really want to have anybody who's dependent on medication coming in as a Marine Corps infantry officer. So that ended up being a poor match. So, yeah. Okay, so we need to record me knocking this out of the sky. Yeah, so we're going to turn the face camera off. Hermitcraft Season 9, Episode 11, Segment Charlie. Take one, and action. Oh, I didn't actually get rid of enough. Uh, there's like four stacks. Uh, yeah, I'll be able to pick that up. Okay. I was just about to rip these down, and I realized, you know what? I should do this on camera. I mean, that's a lot of scaffolds. That goes all the way up to world height. So maybe we should take a moment and just inhale. Oh, oh no, I got one in my throat. Okay, I recommend against doing this. Not a good idea. Don't, don't try this at home, kids. Okay. Hey. <sighs> Okay, well, we have learned something about looking directly up at the scaffolds when we break them. Uh, let's hopefully be more successful in our future endeavors. Time skip! So we're going to stop the recording there. Turn the camera back on. I don't know if that segment's actually going to be funny later, but I figured I should at least give it a try. Okay. Wizard of Docs says, wait, did you just choke on the scaffolding? Yeah, I recommend against it. Okay, so that should be, yeah, four stacks. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that over and put that in. Oh, actually, this is an example of we need to move the storage to the new area. 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 Anybody else worried about the low Elytra? Oh, the Elytra is low. Thank you. I actually did not notice that. Thank you, Ryan, for calling that to my attention. So, okay, we're going to put the scaffolds that we've already got in here. Okay. 
And we have... Let's get these eggs. So we need to get to the spider farm to fix the elytra before it breaks. Luckily, the spider farm is super close by. It tasted like bamboo. Hero of Time says, how much do you record that ends up getting cut? Um, in a given episode, I'll usually have three or four hours of raw footage to work with. And then about 50 minutes of that, maybe 40 to 50 minutes of that would be considered usable footage. So I do my first pass where I cut down from four hours to 40 minutes. And then I go in and I do a bunch of things like speed up me typing and, you know, uh, realize like sometimes I use the same joke a few times in order to see where it lands best. And then I cut out duplicate jokes and things like that. And then it usually gets down to 20 or 30 minutes. So and that's the process there. I'm realizing that I, ha I still have my um, mob sounds turned off from last time I was here. That was maybe a problem. Okay. Okay, let's see. So we have a new Patreon patron who just sent me a message asking for the invite. Just so you know, if you're watching, Benji, uh, I have to send those out manually, and I can't do that while I'm streaming. So that'll come within the next business day. But thank you so much for your support, and you will get that shortly. Dang it, where's the, squ where's the spiders? But, like, so, for example, though, one of the reasons that I start off with so much footage in the first place is, like, sometimes, like, hermits will be like, okay, let's meet up and do this collab. And then, so I'll hit start recording when we meet up and then they'll be like you know what actually maybe we should do this collab at this other location and then i'll leave the recording going just in case anything funny happens but then we'll go to the other location and we'll try to restart the scene again or something like that and so there ends up being a lot of weird like travel time and stuff like that why do i go to the spider farm instead of the enderman farm because my elytra was going to break before i could get to the enderman farm it's further away this is right here Mr. Green Eggs, um, Mojang support will help you fix that if your Microsoft account has problems. Like, they have been getting a, a lot of people I know, including hermits, but also including, like, random people I know from PAX had problems with the migration, and they had to go through the support system. It might have taken a day or two, but they usually got a response uh, that was, like, they got it fixed. So, yeah, just... I know it sucks, but you, you, you just gotta deal with Microsoft. I Enigma says, how long would you estimate goes into editing an average episode? Probably 12 to 16 hours. It's, I don't know. It's hard to say though, because like some of the editing time is like while I'm doing other things. So like, cause I'll be reviewing the footage with different levels of attention. But, like, I have to rewatch. So I usually watch the rough cut, which is, like, the 40-minute cut, at least once. And I mark a bunch of things I need to change. And then I make those changes, and then I do another export. And I watch that export. Oh, hey, Scar. Did you know I was here? You're muted. You can't hear me. Okay. Do we have anything to give Scar? Bye, Scar. Sam's Penguins, thank you for the raid. My name is Joe Hills. I'm broadcasting live from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, John McKinney says, if you tell me the server IP, I'll donate $2 or $20. Your choice. Yeah, actually, that's not appropriate behavior. Like, people who like the art I'm making can give me money without condition. But if you want to come in here and start setting conditions, you're in the wrong place. Uh, okay. Okay. But yeah, welcome. It, also, if you're like, I don't see that comment on Twitch. Yeah, there's three chats running Discord, YouTube, and Twitch. Welcome, Raiders. Sorry you came in right when somebody in YouTube was being childish. But okay. So we have fully restored our elytra now. So up and out we go. We have plenty of string for making more scaffolding. Okay, so from here to get back to where we're building, we need to go this way. 
we aren't mending anymore once we're gaining experience. Exactly. Okay, so here we are. Born to be kings. We're the princes of the universe. Here we belong. Fighting for survival. Vaver Jepro says a very general rule of editing is for every second of footage, it's a minute of editing. I don't think you're necessarily wrong. That's that's probably about right. Okay, so I am kind of annoyed that I put all these scaffolds in along here to support the back box, but whatever, it's fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and capture this second one. I love the noise of them hitting the sea. Purel Shy says, Joe, are you ever afraid if you move away from Nashville, your YouTube intro will become less iconic? No, not really. Because, like, you know, like, let's say that, um... Let's say that I moved to Bridgeport, Connecticut, or whatever. I'd be like, Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Thank you so much for joining me for yet another episode of Hermitcraft. We are going to be working today on our pinball machine, and I believe it will be a most exceptional mechanism constructed at a large scale. Like, people would love that. I actually didn't check how many... Is that... That is four stacks. That's how much we needed out of there. We did miss one. I do want to go back and check out that dungeon down there. Or like if I moved to Vancouver. I'd be like, Oh, hey there. This is Joe Hills from Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> Canada. I don't know why I've got an Irish sea accent. This is completely wrong. There's no part of this that's geographically accurate. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna do that. Not gonna do that. Uh, how's the climate in Tennessee? We're halfway between uh, tropical and temperate, I guess. It's pretty good, honestly. <laughs> No complaints here. Jonathan Drake writes, I'm sure there's plenty of Irish people in Vancouver. JC writes, I'm from Vancouver, close enough. You know, there's a lot of Irish people in Canada. <laughs> Your favorite country, Canada. No, right. I started off the slightest bit Midwestern. That's Newfoundland. Oh, wow. Oh, you betcha. Oh, sure, sure. This is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, no, I'm back in the Irish Sea again. I've learned nothing from my previous follies. <laughs> That's okay. We're just having fun tonight. Tilly Tittle says, I'm from the Vancouver area, but I don't think I've ever met an Irish person. Huh. Your name is Tilly. How have you never met an Irish person? Isn't, like, your whole family Irish? Tilly is, like, one of the most Irish names there is, isn't it? Why is my default accent Irish? I actually don't know. You're Chinese. Oh, that's cool. Ni hao, wo sure, Joe Hills. That's a terrible, terrible Chinese. <laughs> I'm really bad at tonal languages. 
like when the when the instructor was trying to teach us like the different inflections of ma i it took me like a week and a half before i could hear it i'm the absolute worst at tonal languages Sammy Higgins says, getting a hint of wacko from Animaniacs. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Caribbean, Caribbean group, Repu Republic, Dominican, Greenland, Caribbean, Ecuador, something to, uh, oh, wow, that's, okay, we're going to pull up the lyrics to that because I'm going to be really annoyed. Countries of the world lyrics. And now, the nations of the world, brought to you by Yakko. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guyana, and still Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and Ecuador, Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Belize, Nicaragua, Bermuda, Bahamas, Tobago, San Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Suriname, and French, Guiana, Barbados, and Guam. Boom, 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 boom. Norway and Sweden and Iceland and Finland and Germany now one piece Switzerland Austria Czechoslovakia Italy Turkey and Greece Poland Romania Scotland Albania Ireland Russia Oman Bulgaria Saudi Arabia Hungary Cyprus Iraq and Iran there's Syria Lebanon Israel Jordan both Yemen Kuwait and Bahrain the Netherlands Luxembourg Belgium and Portugal France England Denmark and Spain bum 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 India, Pakistan, Burma, Afghanistan, Thailand, Nepal, and Bhutan, Cambodia, Malaysia, then Bangladesh, Asia, and China, and Korea, Japan, Mongolia, Laos, and Tibet. <laughs> it's hard to do the Yakko voice and, and pronounce things like Laos. Because I know how to say Laos. But. China, Korea, Japan. Mongolia, Laos, and Tibet, Indonesia, the Philippine Islands, Taiwan, Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Sumatra, New Zealand, then Borneo and Vietnam, Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, Angola, Zimbabwe, Djibouti, Botswana, Z Mozambique, Zambia, Sw Swaziland, Gambia, Guinea, Algeria, Ghana, Burundi, Lesotho, and Malawi, Togo, the Spanish Sahara is gone, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, and Liberia, Egypt, Benin, and Gabon, Tanzania, Somalia, Kenya, and Mali, Sierra Leone, and Algiers, Dahomey, Namibia, Senegal, Libya, Cameroon, Congo, Zaire, Ethiopia, Guiana, Bissau, Madagascar, Rwanda, Mahor, and Kaman, Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Yugoslavia, Crete, Mauritania, then Transylvania, Monaco, Liechtenstein, Malta, and Palestine, Fiji, Australia, Sudan. Oh, boy. That's a hard one. Y'all, thank you, Sammy. Yeah, that voice... No, I've met Rob Paulson. Uh, he is really good at voice acting. No, or someone says, imagine what his daughter's thinking, right? She should be asleep. Okay. It's time for Animaniacs and the Zany to the Max. Do I remember the original HHH from season one of Hermitcraft? Did we call it Hermits Helping Hermits in season one? No, I didn't realize that we had called it that. Cub fan. We might have had an HHH segment in season one. Honestly, we, what's old is new again. And... Yeah, there's been a lot of restructuring since that song came out. They were excited about Germany now one piece and the Spanish Sahara being gone. There's a lot of changes. Hermits hurt and hurdles. Capture the wool. Oh, okay, that. H H H. Howdy cub. Oh no, that's caps. Lay your head down and dream. 
yeah, Germany was in one piece, but that's why they make a big deal of Germany now one piece. Whoops, that's not the tipping link, that's the Patreon. Boo. It's time to link the tips, welcome. Via paypal.me slash johills. Oh, why do I have so many spider eyes? Now I have two separate stacks of spider eyes. Away with you, off the hill. Okay. We need to relocate. Oh, we need to take that egg basket with us. I forgot to end that. Uh, use that in the ending of the last episode. Outro. But honestly, it's kind of a... Oh no, that was already a shulker. Why would I empty that shulker when I'm trying to... I'm trying to empty the chests into the shulkers. That's the actual objective here. We need to move all this stuff. Do I ever think what an updated We Didn't Start the Fire would be like? Harry Truman, Doris Day, Red China, Johnny Ray, South Pacific, Walter Winchell, Joe DiMaggio, Joe McCarthy, Richard Nixon, Studa, Baker, Television, North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe, dun 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 dun. Rosenberg's H bomb, Sugar Ray, Pan Moon John, Brando the King and I, and the Catcher in the Rye, Eisenhower vaccine, England's got a new queen, Machi and a Liberace, Santa and a goodbye. We didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turned. We didn't start the fire. No, we didn't light it, but we tried to fight it. Okay, so I have room for all three of these, at least. Okay, let's take these over there, as well as this double chest. This is, uh, the server's named Hermitcraft. I, yeah, Billy Joel music, uh, is something my parents really liked it when I was young. Because they were from the suburbs around New York. Even though they didn't live in, like, Levittown or Long Island or whatever. Um, they identified really strongly with Billy Joel and his music. And so that was one of the first CDs that we bought when we got a CD player. Was Billy Joel's Greatest Hits volumes 1, 2, and 3. So we listened to a lot of Billy Joel's Greatest Hits Volume 1, 2, and 3, let me tell you. But like I remember having the um having the uh lyrics books for that. And being like, what? I've never heard half of these words. What's mon talk? Well I'm on the down Easter Alexa. And I'm cruising through Block Island Sound. I had charted a course to the vineyard. But tonight I am Nantucket bound. I took on diesel back in Montauk yesterday. Left this morning from a bell in Gardner's Bay. Like all the locals here, I had to sell my home. Too proud to leave, I worked my fingers to the bone so I could own my Down Easter Alexa. And I go where the ocean is deep. There are giants out there in the canyons, and a good captain can't fall asleep. Ya 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 yo Ya 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 yo Oh, there's just so much good Billy Joel. Like it's so It's it's like its own thing. It's definitely it's a weird thing. Uh 
Okay. Daniel Scores says, you don't look like your YouTube profile pic. I mean, I think I do. That picture is from when, like, I created my YouTube account. But if you change your YouTube picture on, um, the algorithm penalizes you very heavily. So you never want to change your YouTube pic. Basically, don't create your YouTube until you look like what you're going to look like for the rest of your life. People are like, I, can you give me advice about getting started on YouTube? It's like, well, first off, never create a YouTube profile picture. Because if you change your appearance at all, you will be mercilessly mocked by small children. They'll say, Joe, why did you grow a beard? Beards are for old men. Why'd you get old, Joe? You were such a young man once, and now you're this terrible old crone. And then you'll be like, well, oh, okay. You're right, small child. I should never have changed anything about my appearance in any way, in any shape, or any form. The actual solution is to actually get a uh, YouTube picture that ages while you stay the same age. Um, this was, of course, hinted at in the famous story, Flowers for Algernon. <laughs> All children sound like the rats from Fraggle Rock, says Jill Jackson. George Harris says, it's funny how the music your parents listen to sticks with you, even if you hated some or all of it. I didn't hate it. It was just, you know. Okay. Did we actually get the chests? So, this is better in terms of actually getting organized. But... It is kind of a thing. Probably should have silk touched all of those. Just like the famous story, the profile picture of Dorian Gray. <laughs> I'd like to hear the young child who spoke speak Chinese. Oh boy. No you don't. I'm just I'm trying to mentally step through that. Oh. It's not a chest monster yet. Okay. I am the entertainer. And I know just where I stand, another serenader in another long-haired band. Today I am your champion. May have won your heart, but I know the game, you'll forget my name. And I won't be here in another year if I don't stay on the charts. Okay. So... We actually do need to figure out... Oh, no. You know what I realized, though, is all of my... The, the, the reason I have this sword here is because I started growing a bunch of bamboo that would be near where my portal was. But that bamboo is now... Elytra's doing okay. We actually just refreshed it. The spike <laughs> kind of more melodic when you only are cutting down short bamboo with all all the uh all the noises and there goes the sword but we did get 50 something bamboo maybe 60 something so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take these go over here Some people are asking about sea shanties. Um, I think, do I have the star shanty? I wrote down some of the lyrics for the star shanty. Because Brosophy never published them. But I wanted to be able to sing it. Brosophy star shanty. 
Here we go. I'm, how far did I get? I was writing this uh, two years ago. No, I was writing this three years ago before the pandemic while I was walking to work one morning. I was just listening to Brosevi's Star Shanty and uh, trying to type the lyrics so that I could sing it later. Because Star Shanties are obviously more spatially relevant than Sea Shanties. Did I bring the bed? I might have left the bed at the other... Oh, no, I brought it. Okay. Oh, away we will go for the joy of the road and the joy of the stories we will write. And we will never fear, though the dark is drawing near, for we know our way through the night. Overseas, overseas, to the dawn and horizon, I will keep my eyes on the home calling me. I will see, I will see, on the day I arrive in, I will come alive in the home calling me. Now there may come a day when our lines are swept away in a boat made of longing and travail. But our strength, it'll rise with light that fills our eyes, cause we never met a ship we couldn't sail to the stars. And then, yeah, I, I didn't write all the lyrics down, cause I, I think I got to an intersection and then somebody jostled me, so. Yeah, so that's that's the best shanty you're gonna get from me. Where let me link the, the original SoundCloud Brosephine Star Shanty, just so that y'all can hear the original, because this is one of my favorite songs ever made. Um Seriously, this is one of my favorite songs ever made. Like, the first time I heard it, like, I broke down sobbing. Because I was just like, this is so... Like, the thing is, Brosephine is an amateur who I've known for years. I met her at PAX or whatever. And, but, like, it was just such a beautiful, creative effort. And uh, I was just like, I wish that the things I made could be this emotionally powerful. And maybe some of them are to some people. But, like... This one just absolutely, like, nailed it for me. Um, okay. So, yeah, there's the link to Brosephine's Beasting or Star Shanty, the song I just sang the first, like, par uh, what do you call it? The first uh, verse. Wow, this is how amateur I am at music. But, yeah, when I talk to Sean about, like, writing good folk music, I'm like, oh, I want it to be as good as this. Lily says, is this where the Beastinger or your D&D &D name came from? So the Beastinger or my D&D &D name, um, so there's a whole family and adopted extended family of Beastingers in this D&D &D setting. And so this is a song that Brosephine wrote about that family. But yeah, my character is actually supposed to be like a adopted member of that family. So yeah, Handleton Beastinger. If you're like, why is it Handleton Beastinger? That's why. Um, but yeah, they're, they're basically a, a group of, um, a group of people that was stranded from their home, their world was being devoured and they fled into the, uh, Faerun Toral D and D setting. And, uh, but the thing is that they, found other people who were kind of also displaced in some way and, and incorporated them into kind of like what ended up being a crime family in the long term. But like, it wasn't supposed to be a crime family. Their goal was just always to someday stop their original home planet from being eaten and go home. But yeah. How good am I at D and D? Um, well, I mean, I get invited to play in charity D&D &D games with Ryan North and, um, you know, 
Jack from Red Letter Media, so I'm probably not that bad at it. I don't know. Okay. So, let's see. We've not actually built a better place for these chests here. We still need to do that. We actually need to go get more wood to do that. We also need to chop down, like, an entire forest worth of birch. Okay, so that's... This is the way to here. Okay, so we've been going about an hour and a half. So the big thing I need to do is I need to take the thing we recorded earlier and actually go do some more editing on the last video. So we're going to hang out for maybe another half hour at most. But I have a lot of work I still need to do. We are coming up on the hour. Just a reminder, we are $10 away from the next face camera expansion. And tips are welcome via paypal.me slash joehills and YouTube Super Chat. Ezra Manning says, I've never asked, I've never heard someone ask to measure their D&D score before. I know, right? That's weird. Like, are you good at D&D? It's like, I think so. Like, people invite me to play D&D with people who are good at D&D, so I'm probably not embarrassingly bad at it. Like, that's not a thing. Night, JC. Lay your head down and dream. Have fun uh, picking up your kid, uh, Mr. Green Eggs. It's an international event here on the channel. People come in from all over the world. It's wild. Cub fan, good times with Scar, Jevin are all mine. Bum, 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 bum. I have not updated my world. That's I'm actually way behind on that. That's like a whole separate thing. We'll come back to that. Okay, so we've got some iron here, some gold. Why is the emerald door in the house? Um, in case I need it. What if I need to trade with um, a villager? I don't know who likes emeralds? I think villagers. Take the leather. Take the glass. Uh, gravel we're going to need for sure. Copper, sure. We basically need to empty out our house just over time. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Tons of dark oak, yes. Um, I've gotten better at playing D&D &D on streams. As Jurgi points out, there's some of that is like just not talking over people. And I've gotten a lot better at not talking over people. Well, Jurgi used the, room, the, the word steamrolling, but part of that is not talking over people. <laughs> Um, okay. Okay, none of this is urgent. Okay. So, unfortunately, the stuff we've got built so far isn't big enough to actually show up here. Hey, William Zimmerman, glad to see you. Did I get Tango's Beacon? I sure did. We're going to use that to chop down some trees. We just need to get this iron and gold over there. Oh, I forgot to plant the bamboo while we were out, too. Yeah, let's go do that real quick. Okay.
Wait, what am I doing? I feel like somehow I screwed up. Nope. I just, I was reading the chat instead of looking at the game, and I'm like, wait, did I get lost? Okay, this is the intermediate waterway. Okay. Yeah, so here is, um, Jevin's thing, and then my thing is over this way. The map of Doc's perimeter is going to get even crazier on Monday. We're going over there for HHH, and it's going to be wild. Okay, where did I leave? Where's the portal? Oh, okay, there it is. So the bed would be next to the portal on that tree. Yeah, all that stuff didn't, like, pop in on the renderer. Weird. Okay. Okay, so we need to make... We don't even have a crafting bench over here, do we? Blocks of iron, blocks of gold... It's not enough to make a full beacon, but it's a start. That's nowhere near good. Well, you know, we do what we can with what we have. So underneath that, we need a 5x5. Five five. We don't even have enough to make that. Okay. Yeah, stop repeating yourself, William. If you keep repeating yourself, you're going to get timed out, which is what just happened. Okay. So we're going to grab this. Oh, that's one more block, though. Not what I meant to do. Mario Kart is shorter to record than D&D. We have tried multiple times to get a Hermitcraft D&D game together. And every time, it's just been a scheduling nightmare. I'm not saying we'll never pull it off, but I'm... I've tried enough times that I'm tired of trying. Somebody, maybe somebody younger than me will try. Maybe Jem will try, and it'll work. But I'm, I'm tired. Yeah, the beacon is now powered down. Okay, so we need... 7 times 128 times 256. Wait, no, that's not right. No. What's just 128 times 256? 128 times 256. Divide by 64. So we need 512 stacks of um, planks. So we need 128 stacks of birch logs. So we probably need to start working on that. Uh, the Hermits are all really hype about Beef's game. The big difference between D&D &D and Beef's game is Beef's game doesn't take a three or four hour block where you get everybody online at the same time. Beef's game is designed for people to play one-on-one. -on -one. So you just got to get two people to schedule at the same time, not five. Getting five Hermits a three to four hour block at once is almost impossible you might be like but i've seen like meetings where you've got like grian and mumbo and scar and an impulse that's four hermits in one place and it's like yeah but they were there for 30 minutes getting 30 minutes is way more plausible
Uh, NJ, what did you want to ask me? Go ahead. What range do I need to be in for this haste beacon to trigger? I'm like right here. Did it not go in the first place? Maybe it didn't trigger. Yeah, I'm sure getting 50 players together for a raid in WoW is hard too. But like, for a lot of those WoW players, that's something that they structure their life around. The Hermits structure our lives around play, like making videos. And unfortunately, we also all know that if we made a D&D &D video, it would be way lower viewership than everything else we did. So like, that's kind of the other thing is, is like, so people would have to like really adjust their schedules. And like, honestly, once we're more successful and can more easily lose money, then we can do what's called satisficing, which is where you say, I have enough money. I can do something that's economically suboptimal. But for a lot of people who are like, you know, I just quit my job. I don't have any savings yet. Like, it's hard to really say, like, yeah, I'm going to commit to something. Because for me, I was like, I could commit to three hours because I still have my day job. Back when, when I was initially trying to schedule the D&D stuff, I was like, well, I can commit to a three-hour game after my kid goes to sleep. Um, and I'm not really losing any revenue because my revenue doesn't really come from recording and streaming anyway. It comes from my day job. Um, but it's, it's hard to do. Okay. So once we clear out some of these trees here, we're going to replace a bunch of them with birch. Do I still have my day job? Kind of? So I'm no longer a full-time employee, but I'm still doing a lot of freelance work for my old clients from my old day job. Um, and I wouldn't have renewed that contract, but we took a three-month hiatus um, from Hermitcraft, which was supposed to be a one-month hiatus. And so I kind of needed to know that I was going to have money even if Hermitcraft didn't start up back up again for like six months because unfortunately when you tell everybody hey be prepared like set aside money to take a month off and then you're like hey maybe take six weeks off and then maybe eight weeks then maybe 10 weeks then maybe 12 weeks then maybe who knows it's you know it's kind of one of those things where it's like well I shouldn't have a ball back plan so I'm still spending way more time on development work than I expected to be spending. Um, I should ask Scar if I could have emeralds for my beacon since I had to flip my base on account of him. Maybe. I, I, he's just been stealing those emeralds from uh, Impulse, though. I don't think he's actually paid for a single one, so that just really feels like receiving stolen goods, which you don't want to do on camera. Like, that's generating evidence, which I keep telling people here in the chat is bad. Christopher King says, I guess you have double money now? Well, not exactly, because I'm not working 40 hours a week anymore on the uh, day job stuff. Although I am making more per hour as a freelancer than I was working at the day job, I'm also on the hook to pay for my own health insurance and stuff. 
So it's kind of one of those things that like it evens out. I should just steal the emeralds off the bridge like everyone else. But that would be in a video. And once again, that's generating evidence. Scar has his own emerald farm now. Oh, I didn't know that. Maybe we will bother Scar about that. Okay. Replanted. Woo. Okay, NJ, well, what was the thing you were going to ask me? You never said it. Blue Newt says, so we shouldn't do crimes? I mean, look, you do what you need to do, but don't generate evidence of it here. Why not borrow them from the bridge and put them back when you're done using them? Because I don't know. I'm, I'm going to get lost or forget. It's not my strong suit. Okay. Okay, we are about 15 minutes till the end of the stream. I got a lot of editing to knock out tonight for the upcoming video. If you want to get your tips in before the show ends, make sure to do so now. Tips are welcome via paypal.me slash joehills and YouTube super chat. I'm actually going to put up the hydration break sign real quick. Let's see who we need to thank for a hydration break today. Um, Let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see. Sharf had requested. Oh wait, no. Sharf didn't renew Patreon. Um, Stellar Spider had requested Cog, so let's go ahead and thank uh, Stellar Spider for that. This is about a ninety-second song, and I will be right back with a fresh drink. Do 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 do. I put the Cogs into the box, and then I've got another load. After a while, my arms will get tired, and then this job will blow. But I could be replaced by a machine That does my work in half the time But I don't know where I'd go Cause I prefer Putting cogs into the box Now I've got another load Only just a few more hours And then I'm free to go but I can cease in questioning If I really have a home It makes me sick to think of it Cause I prefer Welcome back, everyone. Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you again to Stellar Spider for the Patreon support sponsoring that hydration break. In the meantime, we've got a couple of these uh, trees already growing. Woo! <laughs> Ta-da! So, yeah, what was it? We only need 128 stacks of uh, Birchwood. <laughs> uh, yep, that's from uh, Sean Hill Sings Joe Hills, Volume 1. In the meantime, we can plant some more trees here. That's the thing about building 
a mega base is like somebody's like oh well why don't you go buy logs from Corrales it's like Corrales doesn't have 128 stacks to sell we need more than there are so we're just gonna be over here working on this on and off for the next few weeks Oh boy, this tree is going to be a whole problem, isn't it? It's one of those. Oh, I forgot to plant the bamboo. We need to plant the bamboo as well. Mm, I don't have a good place to plant the bamboo. Dang it. Let's plant the bamboo over here, maybe? It's just not very flat. Like, you want to plant the bamboo somewhere that you have a reasonable amount of flat space. Lectern Full Cauldron is the name of the uh, short skirt long jacket cover. Welcome, Shelby. Glad you could join us. Oops. That was not intentional, but I don't have the ability to easily fix that. So we're just going to leave it. We do have some bones. Uh, yeah, you can find our album. Why don't I have... Oh, because I restarted the... I reinstalled Windows. Oh, boy. What's the name of our distributor? If I distro kid Sean Hills. If I search for that. Sean Hills sings Joe Hills distro kid. Here's our album. Our first album, anyway. Cool, cool, cool. Yay, more uh, these. I can break bamboo with my fist. Yeah, but not as good as with the sword. The sword's just really the way to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut down this tree too. Welcome, Mr. Hardlock! Do do do, do do do, do 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 do. Do 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 da 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 do 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 bum ba dum da dum da dum da dum da da do bum 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 okay so we're gonna kind of keep farming out some of this clearing out some of this. Oh, this tree is going to be another one of these big hassles. Dang it. Uh, I didn't bring the scaffolds. We'll come back to that. Oh, it's another one of these. I need to just TNT these trees that have all the branches. I just, I just don't have the energy to mine them out properly. I mean, I could fly up in there and then eventually remove whatever the problem is. I just... Ugh. 
don't have the energy. I, I've spent so much energy on so many projects today. Dynamite, 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 dynamite. Hey, welcome, Caden Hodges. Hope you're doing well. Have a good night, Yazzie Wolf. Lay your head down and dream. You know what we don't often do is we don't often play the outro music. Why don't we play the... I mean, so, like I said, we've got, like, eight minutes left. We actually have time to play the outro music. I don't want to play... It. I just want to sing along with it right now, but I don't want to end the stream for another eight minutes. Honestly, I kind of don't want to end the stream for another hour and a half, but I won't have time to edit if I do that. And I need to get this next episode edited because <laughs> there's so much footage to go through. Like, it is going to be a really good episode, y'all. Like, but, like, there's a lot of choices to be made. Fire tick is off. Yeah, no, can't just set it on fire. Let's get up back up onto the sleeping tree. Lay your head down. Oh, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Grab your brush, put on a little makeup. Why do you leave your keys up on the table? You wanted to. I don't think you trust in my bum 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 bum. Da, da. No, I don't. Ha I don't need to edit a song. I need to edit the next episode. Episode. The next episode. I've got like the Guppy Geyser ended up being a fountain of footage, and. We just recorded the outro now. This is like the Richard Cheese. This is me doing my own remix of the Richard Cheese remix of whatever that song is called. System of a Down? Is that the name of the song or the band? Is the name of the song Keys Up on the Table? I really am not good at music. Chop suey. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. I feel like I should just kind of keep clearing this out so I can make more room for the birch trees as they come in. More birch saplings. Especially if, well, Scar probably won't have this area loaded because it's kind of a little bit distant from where the uh, he's going to be building. Okay. 
Boom, 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 boom. If I grow them right next to each other, we won't get enough uh, saplings to expand the forest because the leaves will overlap. We need to expand it is the thing so that uh, we can get more over time. Like I said, we need 128 stacks, and we currently have two. That's 1 64th of the total number of stacks we need. This this is a gigantic base. So, yeah, so the, the goal is to, to expand this outward. Because we'll, we'll have exponential growth. The more of these oak trees we replace with the birch, the faster the birch will grow. Also, once we've got it all birch, we can start coming in here and using the um, the bone meal and stuff. Right now, I'm not bothering bone mealing. I'm just chopping stuff down as it naturally grows. Because we have enough other stuff to clear in the neighborhood. Okay. This feels like a pretty solid start, though. Oh, look at that. See all these saplings? You don't get that if you grow them all right next to each other. Ooh, more saplings. Okay, so we're going to go plant those eight saplings over there. We have created the... We've set up the footprint of our mega base. And we are starting on building our tree farm which right now is going to be a very informal tree farm but later on maybe it'll be fancier okay so uh let's see the next thing we need to do twitch.tv slash directory slash following let's go ahead and play the outro music while i figure out who we're gonna raid City is bright, but the stars keep growing dimmer. The dishwasher runs, then you find folks from dinner. Killing lights, charging phones, setting alarms to make their toes. Winding down, closing blinds. The rest for tomorrow when it's time. left the building we're gonna go ahead and raid hot nudge when we get over there our raid messages how do y'all joe hills raid here they are currently playing the walking dead hope y'all have a good time hanging out watching them i'm gonna be hanging out watching them while i'm editing so be polite i'll see you if you're not until next time y'all this is joe hills from nashville tennessee oh wait i never actually hit raid hot nudge hold on how long does it take to raid 10 seconds Anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. Do-do-do-do.